G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel, continuing our New Year's resolution series, working through the 18 clubs, and today we are doing the Collingwood Football Club, the reigning premiers, doing this for a side that just won the premiership is challenging. I've come up with seven, mostly I've been doing eight per club, uh, but trying to, it's not really critique, but try and give constructive feedback to the team that just won the grand final is, uh, is harder than you think it would be. Uh, that being said, I do have some things that they uh, would like to improve in 2024 to ultimately try and uh, achieve greatness once again. If you are new to the channel, and I realize we probably have a lot of new Collingwood uh, supporting new subscribers to this channel because I've done a recent video uh, talking about how Collingwood moved from the 2018 Grand Final to the 2023 Grand Final. If there is anyone who has been watching for a while and isn't aware of that video, uh, by all means, go check it out. So it goes for about six minutes and uh, it was a lot of fun to make and I'm thinking about doing more videos like that in the future. I'm already working on my next one. But anyway, let's talk about the Collingwood Football Club and seven ways that they can improve in 2024 to try and go back to back. The first one is uh, is a very general one, and I, I promise some of them are more specific than this, but I think the first one, the first clear resolution is to avoid the premiership hangover. Uh, this is somewhat cliche, yet it does happen. We have seen premiership hangovers happen all the time, and we've seen a lot of grand final hangovers as well, where teams uh, lose a grand final and, and don't quite come back the same way the following year. So this one isn't really a sense of um, you know strategy or anything they can really do. It's, it's a very internal thing. And it's, it's about mentality and mindset and just motivating the players, I guess, who have just achieved the ultimate dream to try and do it again in 2024, which is a harder task than it sounds because some players lose the hunger and you can't really predict that. That being said, with Collingwood, I don't really get that vibe. Not that that really counts for much, my impression of the vibe, but I do kind of get the sense that they will want to achieve real greatness by you know, winning multiple premierships. So we'll see what happens, but you know, the mentality side of things is something that Collingwood would, would need to focus on going into 2024. Let's go with a bit more of a tangible one. And I think that is probably getting someone like a Charlie Dean fit this year. Again, these are not in order of priority or anything like that. Uh, but Charlie Dean, I do think, is a player that could prove to be important for them going forward. So in 2021, he won the Fothergill Round Mitchell medal, drafted by Collingwood with pick two in the rookie draft that year, if I'm not mistaken. And the narrative around Charlie Dean as a key defender was that that in preseason, the, the rumors were that he was in line for a debut and he's just been absolutely ruined by injury since. So we're talking about a ready-made key defensive uh, player. I was going to say prospect, I suppose he is, but he's, uh, he's a mature age player. I think getting him at least fit and ready for duty at the highest level would be a great move. And I do think potentially with Collingwood's list transition, which is going to happen eventually, he could prove to be a pretty um, valuable asset in that sense. He's ready-made, he's mature, like I said, and it would be interesting to see him try and Maybe there's a dynamic that we can work with all of Darcy Moore, Nathan Murphy, and Charlie Dean all in the same back line. Otherwise, just having him as a backup uh, and be there in case of you know injury and stuff like that. We know Collingwood don't have the greatest depth of tools. I think Charlie Dean getting fit and ready for AFL football and, and exposed a little bit at the highest level would be a really good resolution to have. The next one is probably more around their actual you know hopes of going deep in September again. And this is just integrating Lockie Shaw seamlessly into the new look forward line. So it's new look largely because of obviously Ginevan going out, Schultz coming in, but also Dan McStay doing his ACL. So the dynamic, which I'll make another point about in next the next resolution, is going to change. Now I've talked about Schultz a lot in the um, you know the off-season content that I've done since he's been traded to from Fremantle, but he is definitely a dangerous addition to what is already a pretty dangerous batch of smalls that Collingwood have. So he's kicked 63 goals in the last two seasons, 33 goals last year. Really good output for a small, uh, to be honest, but we also factor in his four tackles a game. We're talking about a dynamic, uh, goal-scoring, defensively-minded forward who can also sort of roll through stoppages as well. He's not a tall, so he's not a like-for-like -like replacement for, for Dan McStay in, in any sense. We'll talk about that in a minute. That being said, his goals will be an important avenue to Collingwood, who will need to be hitting the scoreboard in 2024 regularly. They're already not a massively high-scoring side, so getting another player who hits the scoreboard will be a massive boost. So long story short, integrating him, finding a mix that works with that forward line will be a huge focus for them. Which leads me to my next point around their forward line, and that is finding a key forward solution for Dan McStay. Um, now, Collingwood do have a number of options. The only tricky thing with it is that not, many, very, not very many of them are actually true key position plays in the way that Dan McStay was as that real tall timber target, if that makes sense. So what is the, what's their starting mix? I'm led to believe that Ash Johnson is probably a lock for this spot. Again, a little bit undersized. I'm not saying he's not talented, but in terms of the mix they've got there, you're probably going with Mason Cox 
as a resting deep forward. Um, and then Majacek, obviously a proven goal gun. He's an absolute star. And Ash Johnson. So between the three of them, none of them are truly traditional key position forward. There's a few options behind that. You know, Reef McInnes, uh, I believe, had a good uh, VFL season, kicked 30 odd goals. Again, is he an undersized key forward? Is he a third tall? Is he someone who can rotate as a midfielder? I've also uh, read that suggested about Reef. So uh, another player I'd like to see in the team at some point this year. And then there's also Nathan Kruger, who just hasn't played a lot of footy at AFL level. So finding some sort of mix that works, even someone that just brings the ball to ground and let their smalls do the damage will be a focus for them. But I know Collingwood won a premiership without Dan McStay, but to go a whole 24-round season plus finals again without a true key forward will be a genuine challenge and they need a way to fill that void. The next resolution I have is just uh, adding a little bit of exposure to some young midfielders, namely Finley McRae and Ed Allen. And I've talked about them already previously in videos, but when you consider Finley McRae is probably the next cab off the rank in terms of midfield depth. He's only played 12 games. Nine of those came in his first season. He's only played the three since. And I'm led to believe by Collingwood fans that he is, uh, is pretty much ready to, to integrate into this side. So whether or not uh, they, he starts round one, whatever, Getting him some games um, and building a bit of confidence and experience with him so that when the time comes where they lose Tom Mitchell, Scott Penderbury, side bottom, these guys will need to be backfield. So Finley McRae is arguably the most important one. The other one is Ed Allen. I realize he's probably a little bit more of a longer term one, but making sure that his development is going smoothly so that McRae and Ed Allen will be able to be pushed into this side when it, the time comes that they lose those three uh, experienced midfielders that I talked about. I know that Collingwood, you know, they're, they're in the here and now right now. So pushing kids in before they deserve it and filtering out experienced veterans doesn't sound like the most appetizing thing. However, I think Collingwood probably would be of the mindset that this premiership window, they don't want it to last for two years. They want it to last four, five, six, you know, like some of the best teams of the modern era. I think Collingwood's going to be ambitious in that sense. And therefore, getting these guys in, seeing what they can do at AFL level will be important. So that's... That's my logic for why I think getting some games into McRae and Allen where it makes sense and where it's justified would be a great result from 2024. The next point I have is uh, making sure that they can rely on their depth. And that that's uh, probably uh, related to some of the other topics I've already talked about in this video. But we did see Collingwood's drop off in form kind of coincide last year with the absence of uh, a few key players, namely Nick Dacos and Darcy Moore. Now, I know that's not the strongest point to make because Nick Dacos and Darcy Moore well, they're both all Australians, and they're probably two of their best, like absolute best players. So any side would struggle to cover their best two players. However, it'll just be a, you know important focus for them to to have the next layer of guys who are going to come into the side be able to perform, and that's going to be guys like Charlie Dean in the case of Darcy Moore, um, perhaps John Noble. He did play a lot of footy in 2023 and was unlucky not to make the grand final side, but there is also a chunk of untried depth in this team. You Jacob Bryans, Ed Allen, Finley McRae, like I said. Demetrius also in this mix, Reef McInnes. So I guess like any side, Collingwood's depth will be tested in 2024. So I just want to make sure that the guys who do get opportunities are the right ones and potentially will have a long-term future at the club too. And the final point I make is probably a list management one. In fact, it definitely is. And that is to add a quality tool to their list. So I, the, in the context I talked about their forward line, finding another a key forward or you know at least a tall forward option uh, in the absence of Dan McStay is in the context of what they've got on their list now. So this one is about recruiting one because I think they're going to need to do that regardless. This happens to be at a fortunate point of time for Collingwood where there is going to be three, in my opinion, gun key forwards on the market potentially. So I'm sure Collingwood are already doing their work in this space. Ben King is uh, is out of contract, as is Jamari Yugelhagen, as is Logan McDonald uh, from the City Swans, who is uh, you know was a Collingwood fan. So obviously uh, that would be an ideal result. Want any of those three? Any of those three would be a fantastic result for the Pies. So the resolution will be to pursue this avenue really, really as far as they can because obviously it's out of their control whether these guys come and play for them but to seriously consider it I think uh, is something that they need to do to be honest they did also neglect to draft at all in this year's national draft a little bit of an odd choice although we know that it's probably if they draft at all it's not going to help them necessarily for 2024 I don't know exactly where their supplemental picks sit because we know they had a few train-ons. Josh Eyre, Brins Hekel, a couple of talls training with them. And I think at the moment they are still unsigned because we are obviously in the Christmas bake as I record this video. So I'd imagine they're gonna add at least one train-on player. Either Eyre or Tekel, you know, whichever one presents, maybe both, who knows, but I still think exploring the free agency and trade market for some of the names I mentioned will absolutely be a focus for Collingwood and it should be one. But anyway, guys, that is my take on the reigning premiers for 2024 in terms of their New Year's resolutions. Some pretty uh, tangible stuff there that they can really work on. 
they do have some challenges coming forward. Like I, I think in terms of team balance, for sure. But like I've talked about with Collingwood, the way they play their football, their attitude, it kind of transcends just being merely talented or having a balanced team because they didn't really have a balanced team in the finals. And yet they still emerged as the number one team overall. So it'll be interesting to see how they front up in 2024. Do they still have the same hunger and desire? I wouldn't bet against them. That being said, I still naturally think they have things to work on in order to continue being the best. But let me know in the comment section what you agree with or disagree with, guys. As always, I value your input. It helps me get better at what I do. As always, I appreciate you watching the videos and I appreciate you being subscribed if you are. So for now, I'll say goodbye and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.